So for those of you who aren't aware, uh, Godo officially went into alpha about a week and a bit ago. Um, however, it is in alpha. It is not feature complete. It is not, I mean, it, it's pretty good. It's not fully stable. There are bugs. There's, you know, a whole bunch of things happening. Yeah. So what we've got now is not ready for a course. This is just exploratory. Hello, Louis. Hello, Roderick. Uh, hello, Mikey. Hi. How's the volume, by the way? We've been fiddling with the volume, so it should be a little bit better. Yes, I've had problems hearing Yan. I think I need a hearing test. What? And I've been pro having problems listening to Mikey because I just get this, ooh, kitten. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So we're going to try our best to show off what we've got so far. Um, a little caveat here. We are going to have to stream from Yan's. When I run it on my system, uh, there's some issues with transparency. It's a known issue in Godot at the moment, and it's expected it being in alpha. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yan doesn't have these issues, but we'll have, unfortunately, Discord compression helping us out. Smoothing right, so the, the idea is, is to go back and forth a bit. So things yeah. that, you know, I want to show you live code and things will show you my side. Things that we want to show you in high resolution with weird alpha problems, or not alpha, transparency problems, will show on Mikey's screen. Yeah. Uh, specifically, anything with transparency seems to have a problem with draw order and or draw yeah the draw order so mm. it seems that anything with transparency will show through walls or inside the wall and it, it, it looks a bit weird um yeah. which one shall we do first i figure we'll give a quick little demonstration and then we can yeah yeah why don't we do your end because it'll be like prettier it will let's see if i can launch godo 4 plus i've added a bunch of things that you haven't seen so we've got a slightly different uh, feel this evening as well. We were we were trialing a new way of showing off high resolution streaming from Yan's side and everything else. Yeah, it just I couldn't gain access. So we're we're yeah. going to play with that in the background and hopefully that will improve things over time. I got it working. It was fine. I couldn't see Yan. That's fine. A little bit of a problem there. So or hear me. <laughs> um, if I do this. Hopefully that won't change the stream, but you should be able to see oh, yes, the screen. Yes, I can. Okay, so don't worry about the screen. That's the volumetric fog, but nothing is rented in this level because it's a procedurally generated dungeon and there's nothing in it yet. So we just see the volumetric fog, which is green. Nice. So mm. just, to, just to really hammer that point home, there's nothing in the scene but fog. I mean, you can see that in the scene tree. There's a level, there's... Uh, navigation thing, there's a dungeon, uh, there's an environment, and there's a timer. The timer is to wait a second after the dungeon's done before we start generating the navigation mesh. That makes sense. Hello, Governor! Good evening. Is there a sneak peek for the upcoming first RPG Blender course? What topics are covered? Good question. We will talk about that in a second. Mm-hmm. All right, Mikey! We want to show off Got out. So, before I do anything else, where is the size of the dungeon? Is it an appropriate it size? It is on the dungeon generator, which is that one. Dungeon maker. It's and a six by it six. Six grid. by six for now. So yeah. there's a potential. If I increase this room chance, just put everything to, one, to the default. Yeah. Exactly. And the erase fraction is a f erase fraction is basically chance of junctions. Awesome. Let's press play. Shouldn't take too long to generate either, which is awesome. Boop. There we go. All yeah. right, so if you make this big screen Whoop. and press escape, capture your mouse, and you'll also see Bob is following you. So you'll also notice Aria isn't in the game yet, which is fine. No. Now, one thing you haven't seen, Mikey, is I've added the chest. They don't do anything except for that, but rather than using animation, that we're using tweens. So if you just go in and out, it won't snap to the beginning of the animation. It'll just go from where it is. Nice. And the same, not just the motion of the up and down, but the light. Uh, you can see there's a door there. You can see the, the this things are dealing through glitches, the surfaces. Yeah. That's the glitch we were talking about. So we don't know if this is a Windows thing or just on Mikey's machine or a driver issue. But when Mikey runs this, he gets this bug. I don't get this bug, but you won't get the high def when I stream. Uh, collision particles. Mikey, show off some collision particles. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. So yes. Um, we have Bob the Skull um, on a uh, on a runtime generated navigation mesh. We have a flashlight that Mikey can turn on and off. What's the key for that? Left click, isn't it? Yep. So this is one throne room. Um, I have figured out a better way of, of picking the rooms. I just haven't implemented it yet. Uh, but I like the particles we have in the skulls. Sorry we can't show the, the full thing because of this 
horrible bug. But yes, yep. if I, uh, I'll try and get a bit closer in there. You can see there's a, an actual particle effect in there. It's not just a light glowing. And a different one in the skull that's following him. Although, again, it's a little hard to see. But it's a little yeah. uh, fire effect. With it's the, a the much slower fire the effect as well. It's pretty... It's, it's a different particle. Yeah. Let's carry on exploring. So how many rooms do we have in this now, Jan? Um, the, 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 the depends on the, the things you pick. So there's a 25% chance of a room. Then a quarter of the grid sections should be a room. I've also removed the plain room, so you're not going to get any boring rooms with nothing in them. Awesome. Do they all have doors, or is there a chance nope. for a door? Ah, chance of doors. Oh, this room again. Fun. <laughs> so we've had this occasionally, and that's the beauty or not the beauty of procedural generation sometimes. You get rooms randomly. Here's a boring pillar room. Um, some things to notice. We've got fog coming up half a meter. This is a basic shop room. So there's a little purple fog coming up half a meter. There's a volumetric fog which goes to the which you can see the distance and it's producing a little bit of haze and there's a weird wall glitch where two walls are on top of each other yes. i'm not quite sure what's happening there but... <laughs> i was looking at they're going something's definitely going funny there and this is this is one of the giveaways that we had um that it was definitely something to do with the transparency in, in god of four at the moment if we have a look at that glass panel on the front there it's completely balked yeah that's the uh, tech um, we actually had a lot of trouble getting the lighting working right with this because of the way we made them the, the things the meshes um which we should talk about a little bit Ooh. here's what you haven't seen so is this the same or similar to the previous code where the things were placed in the room randomly currently i have the things placed non-randomly yeah. but the actual books on the shelves are random oh <gasps> oh hi bob yeah the, that should be a banner but transparency issue so bob's just Obviously, I'm moving a lot quicker than he can. He's just caught up with me. I comple yep. completely forgot he was there. Oh, Here's nice. Room you haven't seen. So again, another another room. I do love the lighting effects in, in this version. Yes, it, it's smoother. It's almost like the caramel version of the previous game. Well, it yes. I mean, you can really... Because these are the same meshes we had before. Yeah. Right? They're, but they feel very different. Like, you can tell there's a different lighting engine going on. Um, but just... With a little bit of fog, like we've got amber light, we've got some blue glowies, and we've got some violet light, and this room just feels, you know, much more efficient. Here, like the, the gem boxes give you a, a subtle red light. Yes. And to get closer, if you can we see can find the room. potion room, if there is one in this level. Um, What's a potion room? The one with the green cauldron. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, dark corridors now you've definitely tweaked the the lights during the week when we were both playing this and um uh, and, t and testing things out there was the, the rooms felt a lot or the corridors felt a lot darker so i think the ambient lights has gone up uh we now have sdfgi properly running in this one it wasn't when you were looking at it and let's pick up the volumetric fog question from governor have you noticed any difference with performance between god 3 and god 4 with vulcan yes yes i have part of that is we have occlusion working so each room has its own occlusion do you want to restart the level so i am going to i'm gonna i'm gonna have room chance at 75 percent. so we'll have okay. far more rooms so we can hopefully get the uh, spell room or the potions room uh but yes it, you get much much bigger nice <laughs> i forgot that the pit room was actually something we could have thank you yeah um yes no the, the this runs a lot smoother with a lot more going on um part of that is the occlusion because we can now get uh 10 by 10 grid and it'll still run at 60 frames a second on my, on my machine um i would jump over this if i were you so what happened there was i died and the level regenerated so a yep. brand There's new a level. lot of chasms in this level yes <laughs> okay you're looking for the cauldron aren't you yes i am is this going to be there's a lot of the altar rooms as well mm -hmm. which i need to make more interesting some sort of meeting room I suppose the good thing about being able to see through the walls slightly is you kind of have a, a bit of an idea what's lying up ahead. Didn't stop you from leaping into a pit of fire, though, did it? Ah, that's horribly graphic. It is. I don't like it. I, I see it. I see it up ahead. Part, wasn't it? Yay. 
so one of the things I, no I noticed a lot when walking around here is just just the added look at all the light changes i mean the purple one would have shown it as well but the fact that this is so different well, turn off your flashlight Beep. and it's the the difference that that haze makes is, is huge yes should but point out of course um we're, I'm, I'm definitely comparing this to god 03 when i when mm. i'm when i'm being amazed by it and everything else so uh, of course there's so much more to go and now that we've got this new rendering engine we are having a look at uh, the the different materials as well because they're going to look significantly different in a different rendering engine well they really do like i had to take the shine off the stone completely like to turn the yeah. roughness up to one because it just looked plastic it looked like a well cleaned dungeon didn't it mm. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but yeah, so this is a, a nice little uh, introduction to what we've got. Um, differences between in performance. I mean, do you want to show how a ten by ten runs? It'll take longer to load. Yes. But once it's loaded, we shouldn't notice any difference. Now, the first time I asked Mikey to do this, he did a twenty by twenty, and I said, "Don't do it bigger than ten by ten. It might hang. My code isn't optimized." Did he listen? No. No, he did not. When do I ever listen? <laughs> <laughs> hello coffee so yes this will take a few a few moments longer to run yeah but the, the fact that we can do this that we can tweak things and just have a different dungeon to play and it yeah, is I also this to, is a lot quicker um, as well it is a lot quicker than it was previously yeah um i need to optimize the actual procedure generation like I've, I've spotted a couple of areas that i could massively speed this up but we should be going in yep where'd it go or it might have crashed. It might have crashed. I think it might have crashed. So I'll try again. And again, this is this is why... navigation mesh has been known to crash things, which is why I put the pause in. Um, if we've gone by ten by ten, the pause might not be long enough. Um, so that could be the issue. Yeah, possible. And that that's uh, that's one of the things why we're waiting for this to be stable. It's it it's so difficult if you're learning a piece of software. There and... we go. Excellent. Yeah, it's so difficult if you're learning a bit of software and you don't know whether you've caused the crash through something, and you know, dividing by zero is a very common one. But if you if you don't know why it's crashing, then it, it's a, it's a very bad learning experience. So we do want to make sure that uh, Godot is not only stable for us to be able to teach, but also stable for people to learn it as well. I mean, there's also the fact that it's there's no feature freeze yet. Like, expect everything to change. The way I've been doing this is we're keeping the record on Git, but at any point a change might come into Godot, or we might do something which just breaks the project. Like, this is not ready for runtime, uh, for for showtime. You should not be using this for live projects. <laughs> like, this is very much exploratory. But we already have some fun particles, navigation. Yeah. The new navigation system is a lot of fun. Um, Bob is actually being driven by something called a navigation agent. I'm you just hide drop the navigation there. agent in, and then you can tell it find the path. Well, not even find the path. Like, here's your destination. Your new destination is here. Great. There he is. Here's your maximum ah. speed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, if you jump where he can't get to you, he'll just stop and wait for you to move. Ah, oh, yes. I found like my favorite room. Tidying up simulator. I don't know why he does this, but he does like to do it. Also, turn off that flashlight. There we go. You're ruining yeah. my pretty lights. I want to show everybody the light. Oh, the, is the is the door shut? Is, is no, he lost? Oh, no, he's there. You won't. Is, is, is he stuck? Might yeah, be. I think he's stuck. Never mind. Give him a push. Nudge. Yay. Come on, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Simple things. Uh, so the library I did today, the throne room I did today, um, I'm just basically playing with lots of different versions. Um, the rooms are rotated randomly. There's one of the four possible rotations they can be. Yeah. At the moment, they're all having to be designed with there's between one and four doorways, so we can't put things in the center of the wall. Yeah. Um, we could change that and just have like, you know, here's if uh, her, here's a list of rooms with one doors. Here's a list of rooms with two. I don't really want to get into that, uh, but we could. In fact, for the most oh, I've got another room that I need to tidy. 
Since you've moved one of your benches, so you can't. I mean, the, one of the reasons why I... These benches, by the way, have collision avoidance uh, on them. So if you hide behind a bench, Bob will try and avoid the benches. There he goes. So yeah, I, I, I think one of the reasons why I wanted to try this is before in God of 3 when it came to the Oops. Pacific Engine... <laughs> well, you, did get, you did get quirky things. Hi, Bob. <laughs> just, <laughs> just tiny Bob away. <laughs> I'll just put this lid back on. No, uh, so beforehand, when 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 I would do something like that, the the benches would just go completely chaotic and probably end up out of the map, um, which is quite And also, if you system. put something out of reach of navigation, <gasps> so right now Bob is outside the navigation mesh, you would just get a massive crash. But now I can put in, if it is reachable, then navigate. If not, stop. And this or this rather, opens if up. If it's reachable equals mm -hmm. false, then linear velocity equals vector three zero. I was just thinking this this now really opens up to the fact that um, if there are many skeletons, I mean we've got to try this soon with some NPCs in uh, to see how performance. Well, should happens. we talk about Blender and assets? Yeah. Okay. You're not coming back to the camera, are you? Oh, there you go. I am coming back to the camera. Yes. I just need to hide this out of the way. Yeah. Ooh. <gasps> oh. Boop. Hello. I do that. So yeah, um, we we can talk about the the sneak peek of of the Blender courses and stuff. Um, one thing we found, so when we first made these assets, we made a decision very early on that we're going to assign materials, but we're not going to texture them. So there's no point in UV unwrapping anything. And that's fine in Godot 3, but in Godot 4, it means the lighting doesn't work. It's a it means you get weird 45 yeah. degree shadow on every asset. Because it doesn't know where the lighting goes. Uh, so we, I had to go through our assets on every single one and unwrap them. Well, Fortunately, Blender has put UV coordinates on yeah, them. Yeah, smart UV unwrapping is all we needed to do in this particular case, which is actually all you need to do in a lot of cases anyway when it comes to un unwrapping your assets. 